Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel is Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna go over and do our daily technical analysis update of commodities. We'll take a look at the dollar, 10, 30 year yield, precious metals, and all the other commodities that I follow. And I'll give you my financial opinion. So let's dive right in to the DXY and look at the relative strength of the dollar first. So here is the relative strength, the DXY. Um, we are heading higher with the dollar. So this is a turn. Uh, so we, we came on back. We had a little wick at the bottom and we're turning back up to do what I think is a return move to the breakout and then a fall lower after that return move. So we are getting buying pressure there. Buyers are stepping in and they're, I should say the dollar is strengthening. Uh, but we have broken through this uh, support level. Uh, we're probably going to do a return move, and then I think we're going to head lower uh, over time. It's going to take some time. And overall, um, I think looking at this last bull market, we hit a top of the DXY in January of 2002, headed lower. And it looks to me like we've hit a top here and we're starting to head lower in the DXY. It's a tailwind, generally speaking, for. Uh, assets that are priced in dollars as the dollar falls against other currencies. And that also impacts money flows where money wants to flow differently away from uh, dollar denominated assets if the dollar is losing value against other currencies. The 10 year yield, which is TNX, uh, was flat today. Uh, so we've been just moving flat these past couple of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven trading days or so. We have broken the uptrend line to the downside, which I think ha still has pressure to the downside, where yields could pull back further. Now, I know that uh, Mr. Jerome Powell, he, he still says he wants to raise rates. So it's going to be interesting to see how this all plays out and if inflation is, in fact, uh, pulling on back the consumer price index uh, numbers. Uh, if they continue to pull back, I would expect this to go lower. If uh, Powell raises rates and we get another inflation number that is high, we could still go higher in the 10-year yield. Looking at TLT, which is bond prices, bond prices flat today, much like yields are basically flat. So we're flat on bond prices, moving sideways. We've got the 30-year yield also moving sideways, down 0.56%. So, again, 30-year um, yield looks like it wants to go lower. Ever since we got that release of the inflation number, things look like they want to head lower in terms of yields. And long-term view, we had a major breakout for yields going higher. Uh, and I do think we are now in a new uptrend for the big long-term. But that doesn't mean that we're just going to go straight higher. You're going to get these pullbacks. They're going to happen uh, throughout, and sometimes they're going to be quite large. <clears throat> TYX to TNX ratio, we've broken out of this downtrend line, but we are drifting a little bit lower. Uh, are we going to ride and grind this line for a while? Yeah, we very well could. And right now, this is, I mean, a, a slightly lower number. It's usually a little bit unfavorable for uh, precious metals, uh, especially with the dollar up too. The, it, it, this is a complex that the yield curve and how it inverts and uninverts and the dollar, it, it, there's a lot of inputs to the price of gold, silver, uh, and, and platinum. And then you've got the physical demands for all those as well. So right now we are pulling back a little bit lower, which is actually favorable. <clears throat> for like an inflationary, you know, inverted yield curve, I should say, uh, of the 30 and 10 year. Uh, commodities sideways. Uh, sideways today at 0.04%. We're right on the blue support line. That blue support line goes across. Uh, we traded there a bunch. Uh, we hit it a couple times from the, the top side for support. And we're right there um, at that level. Now, is this thing going to rocket higher? Are we going to break through and go lower? Um, that is yet to be determined. We've broken out of this pattern to the upside. That is positive for uh, a move higher. Uh, that leaves evidence for a move higher. But again, we're only playing with statistical probabilities here. 
with the, in the short term. The CRV to S&P 500 is flat. Uh, we're just moving sideways in this uh, sideways channel. Uh, big picture view, we've broken the downtrend line. We've had a big move up out of, out of that downtrend line, and we're just kind of working our way sideways. Uh, this very well could pull back some <clears throat> to a level uh, where the S&P 500 outperforms the commodities for a little bit before we get a very large move higher um, in the future. Now, when I make these comments, guys, it doesn't mean they're absolutes. It's possibilities and stati you know, statistical chances, probabilities by looking at charts. And, you know, a lot of these times when you get, you know, pullbacks, you get pullbacks to some Fibonacci um, move. So if we go from the low here and come on up, you know, maybe we hit 0.618, which is basically this level here, <clears throat> which is a possibility. It doesn't mean it has to do that. Gold slightly lower today, eleven point two dollars down, <clears throat> and we're on top of all that support. Are we going to get a bounce here? You know, I'm favorable for a directional move this way with time. We've got large buying pressure here, and we're we're just coming off doing kind of the retest move uh, that we normally see when we cut through all these different um, resistance levels, which are now support levels. So we're coming back and test, retesting those support levels. Silver also looking strong. Uh, we have lots of buying pressure, not much selling pressure. I do think that will resolve itself higher over time. Uh, it still looks good. And platinum, uh, again, strong buying pressure through here, much less uh, selling pressure. I do think it will eventually resolve higher. Uh, what the exact path takes for that, difficult to say, uh, but we're not getting totally slammed with selling pressure uh, in comparison to the buying pressure that we experienced before it. Uh, it is even possible to do a retest down in the mid to lower 900s. It, it, that is possible again. In the upper to you know, 930, 940, 925, 920, it's, it's possible to get down there. Uh, XU to go ratio sideways. Lots of sideways action today. Still above support. Still looks fine. Uh, GDX also sideways, uh, down 0.69%, basically the same as gold, and moving sideways. Still looks good for a potential move higher if the buyers want to push it higher. Uh, same with SILJ, still looks good. Uh, above support with SILJ, it's right there above the uh, a longer-term support level too. And we could easily head higher if the buyers want to push it that way. We're on support. Crude oil, massive day today, guys. Um, I know some people were, they were trying to, I guess, trash talk me a little bit, um, saying that, you know, oil is going down, whatever, but it reversed hard. And there was some news that came out in oil. Um, I don't know how legit that news is. Um, news could move prices around so easily, especially if the markets are not super liquid. And um, we got this fat tail on the bottom. I think this could potentially be. A bottom here. I know I'm risking, you know, risking saying that, but we've got hammer candlesticks side by side. And usually when you get these big candlesticks, they are usually at the bottom. Like you get one here, you get one here, you get the, these, these candlesticks that are usually short term little bottoms. Now, is this going to rocket through everything? I don't know that. We could, we could rock it up and come down. We could have a little bounce. We'll see what happens. Uh, but I'm glad that the buyers came in at the end of the day and bought this thing back up. That's showing some strength. Uh, natural gas, that thing just took off today, 6.24% to the upside. Um, some of the natural gas companies look really good right now. <clears throat> and we've talked about those on the Platinum membership for the finding-value.com, uh, about those, those companies, some of my favorite natural gas companies. And they were up today, irrespective of what crude oil was doing, which was all over the place highly volatile. Uh, XOP, it is down, but we're still above support. Uh, we got that nice candlestick um, where you got the wick at the bottom. It's a nice hammer candlestick. We're still above the, the support level here. So everything still looks all right. Even though we had, uh, I would say, a big, a big sell-off in, in the beginning of the morning. And OIH is doing the same thing. Nice little hammer candlestick. And we're still above support. Everything looks all right from a long-term perspective. Uh, and we're getting that little bloody nose on a monthly candlestick basis if we decide to 
to end this month somewhere where we're at. Uranium, uh, I've got a sideways price on the futures contract pricing. This looks it's pretty rough. I don't really see too much here um, for that. But the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust, sideways today, 0.85%. It looks like it's trying to find some support here. And we'll see which way this thing goes. If it rockets higher or goes on lower, or we could potentially go sideways. We do have a lot of support in this general vicinity, kind of right where it's at. You can see all of this buying and selling pressure all through here. So we're just sitting on top of that buying and selling pressure. We probably got some more buyers out there wanting to reload, saying if it ever came back to this point, I'd buy more. Uh, URNM is playing with its support level. It's right on top of it, little wick at the bottom, which is, it, it's not bad, but not great. It's not a huge cam hammer candlestick, but we're on support. Now we got to see if we're going to hold here or if we're going to break lower. Uh, we're kind of at that that level where, um, you know, what, what what direction are we really going to go? We're back on support. Tan still looking all right. Not much selling pressure. Down 0.8 percent. I still think this looks good to go higher um, from a long term perspective. Uh, COPX. This is our copper miners ETF. Uh, zooming on the dailies, we're right on support, and we'll see if that support holds. So we got the retest move, and now are we going to move higher or break down through this support? Um, a lot of the companies don't look too bad. So, you know, diversified mining companies, they still look pretty good. We've got uh, LIT. This is the Global Lithium Battery ETF. Again, we're just moving sideways here, uh, bouncing around back and forth. I don't see a clear direction. Uh, is this a consolidation? It's tough to say, guys. It's just bouncing sideways, moving moving on sideways. Uh, REMX, we've broken out of the falling wedge, broke to the upside, did another retest. Uh, it still looks good. We've got nice little buying pressure there in that hammer candlestick today. Uh, big long-term support levels where we're at, and we're just basically resting on top of it. Uh, the S&P 500 down a little bit. Again, we're just... We're underneath this resistance level, and we're just kind of chilling out. Not much selling pressure, not much buying pressure in either direction. Uh, eventually, this will break. Let's look at the weeklies. You probably get these little, yeah, these little um, bloody nose. It's usually, it usually is a little resting point, and then you break higher. Um, that's kind of what I think would happen when looking at this pattern here on the weeklies. And then you've got the same setup. With the NASDAQ composite, you've got these little bloody noses, and that usually is a continuation pattern to the upside, uh, statistically speaking. Uh, emerging markets gotten a little bloody nose as well. Uh, that's usually a sign to move higher. Uh, the dollar is moving higher right now. Maybe this is just relaxing, waiting for that dollar to move on up, uh, hit, do that retest move, and then fall back down. It's probably what's happening. XHB also getting those little uh, bloody noses. I think it's going to go higher. Um, when looking at this, we don't have too much selling pressure over here. And we've popped up quite good with the buying pressure. So I do think it's a stair-stepping pattern to the upside. Uh, looking at Moo, right on support. Uh, weekly candlesticks, it's still looking good from the weeklies. Right on support here. Copper price. Let's go to the dailies. Now we've broke, we're playing around with this support zone. We'll see if we can get it back up above it. And we're just playing with it right now. We also have another support level uh, right underneath us if it wants to rest on that. So it's just moving around. Little wick at the bottom, not a huge one. And it's it's looking all right. Not great. I mean, I wouldn't take a position in it right this second, but I'd like to see some buying pressure. Um, lumber going up today, 2%, still looking all right. Looks like looking like it's getting the buying and selling pressure equal to each other in that kind of dead period. We're still above the support level. Uh, we've got iron ore here. We're just moving up and, and contracting down lower. Can't really see too well um, the candlesticks or anything. There it is. And I think eventually we'll work our way higher um, with iron ore. Aluminum also moving sideways, up 1.5% today. 
and we've been just chop chopping sideways in uh, aluminum on support. Baltic Dry Index, this guy is in a falling wedge pattern. I think eventually we'll work our way higher after this pattern's complete. Uh, usually when they're falling, that is an indication that it's going to reverse to the upside. Uh, Newcastle Coal Futures going up higher today, 2.64%. And uh, we're getting a little bit of buying pressure this past couple of trading sessions. Still looks good to me. Uh, from a longer term perspective. Uh, I know we've had a pretty big sell off. A lot of people are probably writing it off and we'll see where this thing eventually ends up. But I think with an energy crisis, coal will remain elevated um, in terms of its pricing. Ethereum uh, heading lower down 3%. It does look like it's trying to turn around here in the short, short term. We've got a little, little hammer candlestick, not a huge one, but we're coming back and retesting the bottom here. We'll see if we break higher here. If we break lower, I think we're going to go lower. If we if we hold here and start to move up with some good buying pressure, we could be putting in kind of a longer term bottom. Do or die for both um, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Little wick at the bottom, retesting this bottom here, and we'll see if it holds. Interesting times, guys. But um, the volatility in oil today. Wow. I mean, I, I in the morning I was like, my gosh. What is going on? And uh, all the fundamentals are, are, are positive uh, in terms of inventory levels, uh, in terms of demand supply. Now, I know there's a lot of speculation on future supply or future demand and recession and all that stuff. So there are worries out there with that. But um, with inventories where they're at, I still think that the, the, the risk is to the upside, not the downside, um, given where inventories are at. I know we're still doing some strategic petroleum reserve releases. I think they stopped it and then they restarted it. Uh, I saw some stuff that they're going to do it in December. So uh, we still have that ahead of us as well. Uh, Freepoint should be opening uh, its liquefied natural gas facility. I'm here in mid-December-ish and then full, uh, fully open sometime in March of 2023. Uh, so that is good news uh, if you're a natural gas investor. Uh, uranium, it's at a do or die spot. We're right at that support level again. Are we going to hold? Are we going to break? Well, let's find out. Um, definitely sign up to uh, the channel here and we can watch it together. Uh, join the community. Help, you know, I'll, I'll try to help you out and get, get the charts, get the support levels and see where these things are going. If you guys want further analysis, definitely sign up to the website. Um, the Platinum membership is the membership I would choose. Uh, and we have a discount going on. It's just, quote, discount in the coupon code. Uh, and you can sign up. And that is a discount uh, for one month of the monthly membership. And a year, it's a larger discount on the year. Uh, so that's just an FYI there. Uh, but that's what I've got for today, guys. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the content. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. And uh, we'll catch you next time. This is Finding Value.